And Jazz, I want you to give us the all-star perspective on Nestor Cortez because the velo, it's different. But his timing also throws hitters off. How do you navigate that as someone standing in the box against someone like Nestor? I mean, I feel like if you think of Nestor Cortez, think of a guy that if you were to face someone to go out there and he started off the game left-handed and you didn't know he could throw right-handed too. Like, <laughs> think of Nestor Cortez as that guy. You go out there and you're in the box and then you're just like, wait, what's going what's on? What's happening? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's going up here, he's going down there, he's on the side, like, he's jumping over there, he's gonna stay over here and throw some, he's everywhere. What do you, like, do you I don't wanna hit again. for that? Bunt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use my speed. I'm gonna use my speed. Yeah. Just like make contact. Like just it's a, it's a battle. You know what I mean? Because he has a lot of pitches as well. He throws a slider. He has a curveball, fastball, changeup, everything. So you're playing against what he's doing out there, and you're playing against his pitches as well, and they're pretty good as well. So, so actually, you, you look at someone like Nestor Cortez or uh, Johnny Cueto or Marcus Stroman, guys who. They build this in. They're so athletic that they can mess with their delivery right. and switch it up to keep you guys off balance. And that's the, the name of the game for them, right, is to try to make us look stupid and try to make <laughs> us have really silly swings and, and not recognize the ball. And I, I think that's where I wanted to get Jazz's perspective, too, because off of guys that change kind of the speed of their delivery, I felt like I would just try to make sure that I was on time with when they delivered the baseball instead of thinking so much about getting ready at the right time. I just mm -hmm. wanted to be on time when he's delivering the baseball. Do you feel like you, I guess, when guys kind of are able to do that, change up your load at all, change up your, your step, your front foot, whatever it may be? I feel like I go, I'll go to a no load, like a no mm -hmm. step, just stride, no stride, hands, right. all hands, or just like, I think we were facing Stroman this year, and I heard my coach say, put someone on base, he can't do that. Right. You feel me? You put someone on base, he can't go up, down, side. He has to stay with the same delivery every time. So mm -hmm. I feel like the way for them to get Nestor Cortez in trouble today is just to keep someone on every inning. And that makes sense to me, too, just because, like you said, he's not going to beat you necessarily with the fastball, right? He's not a high-velocity guy, but at the same time, you are able to just use your hands. Just, you can simplify things as a hitter and just focus on doing one thing well instead of trying to compete with everything that he has to deliver with. You know, it, it, interesting point, though, on velocity in our industry that we talk about. I mean, there's radar gun velocity, and then there's real velocity. Mm. So he's got real velocity because the ball jumps on you. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't light up radar guns. So I think what happens when you get in a box against him, you feel like you're going to be comfortable because all the video you've watched says, well, he, his average fastball is 91, a little over 91 miles an hour. All of a sudden, you get in there and you feel real velocity because you don't see the ball. Mm -hmm. To me, that kind of velocity is more effective in our game than just pure velocity because he knows how then to use that velocity. I right. agree. So I think there's a misnomer a little bit about this guy doesn't throw that hard. In reality, he does. The number, analytical numbers just don't support that. From a front office perspective, Dan, do you feel like the game is still learning how to evaluate these types of pitches? I do, yeah. I, well, first of all, think about it. From an evaluation standpoint, it's really easy to evaluate speed. It's real easy to evaluate power. You, got, you can run, you can hit for power. You throw hard. Mm -hmm. So it's the safest bet when you're writing up a report on a player, say this is what he can do. Yeah. But the better evaluators in the game recognize what Nestor has. He's got an internal clock that knows how to work within the context of his body movements. Yeah. That guy's going to stay healthy for the most part. That guy's going to be able to duplicate his delivery. That guy's going to be able to make adjustments on the mound when he has to make an adjustment on the mound. I really hope the industry begins to see there are 37th round draft picks like that out there that we can't do that anymore Amen. in our game because we don't have 37 <laughs> right now. But there are players <laughs> out there that are big leaguers if, our, if the people who evaluate them and give them a chance give recognize a chance. those kind of guys. Uh, fun matchup with Cortez against a team that we talked about. Guardians, they make a lot of contact. Tough to put away.